Hey folks, how you all doing? This is Khan over coming to you with another tactical talk. Are you tired of seeing your troops shelled by tanks and it seems there's nothing you can do? On today's tactical talk, it's soft AT. What to build and how to build it. Now, soft AT can be broken down into a couple of categories. Passive AT, and that, by that I'm referring to things such as anti-tank guns and mines. And soft active AT, which might be infantry-based anti-tank weaponry. In today's example, we'll be looking at Panzer Grenadiers with Panzer Shreks. This is not to say that these are only variants of anti-tank defense, especially from a soft AT perspective. There are rare examples of things such as this half-track, which, if you go for a certain doctrine, will allow you to deploy was it regal anti-tank mines and uh, these things are quite fearsome let me tell you and I'll give you a, shor a short example of that moving forward you can see just the simple bars out in the middle of the road here but first the humble mine uh, for the OKW it's the shoe mine for the Wehrmacht it is the Teller mine um, everybody has their own version of it and put simply I mean it can do a fair amount of damage to two different vectors, whether it's infantry or, in this particular case, anti-tank. Mines are a fairly effective way, in a cheap way, of walling off certain paths. Deploying mines in high traffic areas, for example, maybe perhaps here or here, are great ways to kind of deny your enemy movement around the map. Now, mines do definitely come with a trade-off, and that is to say that they do cost 25 munitions per, and if your opponent is on top of things, it can, uh, can be swept with minimal effort whatsoever. The humble anti-tank gun is another valuable alternative to the mine, uh, very often giving you a nice way to reach out and touch an enemy armored vehicle. Unfortunately, both mines and anti-tank guns have their own problems. Anti-tank guns can be circle strafed, a fact that we have seen happen multiple times, or really just see this happening time and again, that unfortunately, anti-tank guns just aren't mobile enough to handle tank defense on their own. Now, it is worth noting that when you're placing mines, your opponent might think to avoid high traffic areas, and that would be obviously an excellent idea. Um, so while many of you out there will consider putting mines on precise high traffic areas, it might be good every now and again to try to use your infantry to lure a tank onto a very non-standard location. Of course, now and again, you can trick your opponent into doing very, very silly, silly things. But to do so, you have to give them a very, very good rabbit to chase. In this particular example, though the tactics of it might be, seem a little bit uh, silly, having a half-track engage a Sherman to draw him down the road, and thus, over top of a regal anti-tank mine, will lead to the tank itself with damaged treads, decreased mobility, and an excellent opportunity for German AT to move in and take out this main battle tank. But what's to be done if your opponent starts bringing in minesweepers to get rid of your mines, and their tanks can simply just circle strafe your own anti-tank guns to death? Well, obviously at this point we have to employ a much more uh, active kind of anti-tank defense approach. In this particular example, you do see that a pack gun has taken a f eight, not terribly forward advanced position, but at the same time, we'll see a couple of common attack avenues covered up by mines. Now, that remains to be seen whether or not it'll be perfect defense against an active opponent who can simply just force his tanks to drive through some destructible cover. But employing a combined arms approach even for soft AT gives your troops a much higher survival profile. Though again, it may require a rabbit to chase. Which brings us to our other version of Soft AT. This is the more active attacking version thereof. As I mentioned before, infantry-based AT weapons can be a very viable alternative to pushing back an opponent. Of course, infantry is not quite as durable as other materials might be, but your opponent tends to kind of tunnel on infantry as opposed to anything else. They might find themselves taken out by a less obvious threat. While the gut reaction, at least for German players, might be to immediately go for heavy late game tanks to fight off your opponent, especially most of the allied factions, with a very, very big emphasis on things like Shermans, please remember that your tank is much more difficult to replace given the economy of the German war machine. 
So I want to show this game real quick, um, at least an example of what I meant by soft AT defense. Very often we expect our infantry to kind of deflect and delay tanks as much as possible, and while that's definitely an opportunity, sometimes expending the munitions can be a very, very expensive thing, both in manpower and munitions by itself. This game right here, though, has something I want you to take a note of. You're going to see this game was between Volpine playing the OKW and NIM. You can see playing the USF in the back. You're going to see Volpine is tossing down mines all along a several prominent kind of um, advancing areas for tanks. I want to pause it here for just a second. You will see that while Volpine is definitely moving up an AT gun, you'll see the, the AT gun will be placed right in this area, right about here. He's picked an excellent position to do so. Why? How? One is that there's no easy means of flanking, at least in the immediate sense. This Stuart is not going to be able to circle strafe around to the left nor to the right. Um, and if you go even further, yes, it is true the Stuart could flank given the access to these roads. But over here on the left-hand side, we have a mine. And over here on the right-hand side, both the, the easiest paths um, that will bring a very, very swift flank are covered, at least in the immediate most approximate sense. Unfortunately, I'm going to turn this back on. You'll see that uh, this tank is not going to fall for even this kind of trap, though. He's going to just smell something really, really cooking here. He shift off to the western side. But this was an excellent example of the proper way to utilize kind of soft AT defense to deflect or diminish um, the effect of an earlier game steward. Well, folks, that's our show for today. As a quick review of what was going on with this particular video, it's important to note that every soft AT is just that, soft AT. There is no guarantee that even the best mine placement, the most active infantry weapon usage, or even the most superb anti-tank gun placement will mean future success. However, instead of losing your own battle tanks to trade out with his, do, do what Rommel did. When his tanks charge forwards, use your anti-tank guns to engage them. If he's moving into opposite areas to areas you don't want him to go to, channel him into your anti-tank areas. If he's moving away from your minefields, from your anti-tank guns, give him a rabbit to chase. Or even perhaps use a brave infantry squad. Do all of these things and victory can be yours. Thanks so much for tuning on to the video today, guys. If you like what you see, you have a topic you want me to talk about in next tactical talk, please comment in the uh, space below. That's all for me today. This is Connell. We're signing off. Take it easy, everybody.